Today's episode is brought to you by Bones Coffee Company. You can forget about boring coffee when you drink Bones Coffee. Not only do they offer a variety of flavors such as strawberry cheesecake and maple bacon, they are a family-owned company that puts great detail not only in their coffee, but in the artwork that comes on each individual bag. Bones Coffee is a coffee club that will deliver your favorite coffee to your door every month. If that wasn't enough, they also have some amazing swag to offer. Check out Bones Coffee Company today. I'll have my affiliate links in the show notes for you. So this is the case of Durante Martin. And on the line with me, uh, I have two of my co-hosts and research assistants. I have research assistant Tammy. Thank you for joining us. How are you, Tammy? I'm good. Hope everybody else is okay. Yeah, we're doing all right. Uh, and then, of course, I have my fellow uh, victims advocate and crime writer, Cricket Andrews. How are you, Cricket? I'm good. I hope everyone else is good and having a good night. Yeah, I think think we're we're ready to do this. We've been we've been uh, going to do this for a while, so it's taken us a little bit. But uh, those of you that are watching, um, we will mention Bones Coffee uh, Company periodically through the show. The reason why we do that is that is one of our sponsors and our affiliate links. Uh, we never charge victims uh, of violent crime. We never charge their families to highlight their cases. And this is the way that we support Sonova Inc. Publishing through our affiliate links or our book um, or my books. And so that's the reason why we will mention that periodically. Uh, but let's jump right in. I want to um, I want you guys to get into this case because it is. It, all the cases are disturbing. So, you know, to call a, a, a case disturbing is kind of um, <laughs> kind of the wrong, every one of them is disturbing. I mean, that's not really the a thing. Um, but when you see how this case has been misappropriated, misidentified, when you see how this victim has, has not gotten justice at all in our system, in our society, it really, it was one of those last night when I was recording, I was getting extremely emotional and, and I try not to do that. I try to stay, you know, kind of keep my emotions even. And, and this was one of them that's kind of hard to do. So we are talking about Durante Martin. And I apologize if I'm messing up his name, um, but that's that's the way I've, I've, I've heard it said before. So I'm assuming I'm pronouncing it correctly. But uh, Durante Martin was a 19-year-old boy who... Uh, uh, he played played football in college, and he 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 had had a rough life. Uh, he was from Fredericktown, Missouri. Him and his mom moved up uh, up north just a little ways, and they they were getting their lives together. He is working a couple different jobs. He he had actually worked hard and gotten a scholarship to play football in college, and everything was starting to turn out well for him. So this was this was you know life was turning around, things were going good, and you've got a 19 year old. And I, I'll I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'll call him a boy, sometimes. I'll say, man, uh, I'm a mother and I have an 18 year old son. So to me, technically, legally, he's a man, but he's a boy. You know, he's 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 in that stage of life where he's just about to get started and break out into the world and become what he's meant to be. And this me and uh, this young man seems like he was right on the precipice of becoming something great and making a change in his life for him and his mother. And and then this horrible thing happens. So we're, we're talking about Durante. I'm going to uh, pull up a picture of him uh, so you guys can see this. I'm actually going to share my screen and uh, you guys can see the website. There is a website that I encourage you guys to go to uh, and I will reference this website periodically through the show and I want you guys to go here because at the end we're going to tell you two different action steps that you can actually do as an audience member to help push this through the system because this is a case that has been dropped the ball's been dropped and nobody's doing anything um, so the the website is justiceforderante.com and so I'm going to share my website my screen here real quick so you guys can see what I am looking at and you can see Durante's handsome face. Okay. All right. So girls on the line, can you tell me when you see this? I see it. I see it. 
Okay, so you've got a, a young African American gentleman here, uh, and I look at this this little uh, with the background uh, green background, and it just melts my heart. It's so sweet looking there. Um, but anyways, we've got this young man who is who is becoming something, who's who's starting to get his life together, and we're going to find out. It gives a really good timeline of what's going on in this case. On April 22nd, we, uh, this gentleman goes and has surgery on his wrist, on his right arm. He, and uh, he has surgery on his wrist to put in some pins. And his arm is in a cast from his fingers down to his elbow. So his arm's in a cast on the 22nd. Now, the reason why that's important, uh, you'll find out here in a few minutes. But on the 25th at 3.01 a.m., uh, the 911 call was put in. Now, what happened between the 22nd and the 25th? Some people that uh, Durante knew from his old high school, um, a, a gentleman asked him if he wanted to go to a party. So he drives with this person 90 minutes, uh, 90 miles south back to Fredericktown. His grandma actually lived 30 minutes away. So the plan was to go to this party and then go see grandma and then go back home. And so this was this was the plan of this young man. And then, um, unfortunately, those plans were never put to uh, those plans never happened. And so this is this is what happened on 301 a.m. on that Sunday, April 25th, 2021. They get a 911 call. Um, and I'm going to play that for you. I'm going to make sure the sound is up so you guys can hear it really well. Those of you that are watching, um, this is a phone call um, by the person that owned the house. And we're going to find out that Durante has been killed in the attic of this man's house. And everything's going to be blamed. And then we're going to spend the evening uh, dissecting that to show why that's not the case. So uh, let's let's play this real quick. You live in Madison County 911. What's the address of your emergency? Uh, yes, I need the uh, cops that and an address. Yeah, apparently I got. You should have got. Yeah. And that's uh, yeah. And is that where you are? Yeah. I'm going to pause that right there. Um, I will say that this, uh, the audio in this is, is cuts out periodically. And I'm not sure if it's actually cutting out or if it's the caller not wanting to answer questions or what it is. But um, I know the first time we played this when we were recording last night, you girls didn't hear that. But did you hear it this time where a female voice in the background is saying that they hate this? Did you catch that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep keep going. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah. Is he breathing at all? Yeah. No. Do you think he's beyond, beyond any help? Do you, do you want to try CPR? Uh, I'll... Somehow got in the back of my... Uh, Okay. Okay, you're cutting okay. down. Uh, hang on a second. Okay. Uh, I can't even get turned to her. Please. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to stop the recording there um, because it just continues on to that for a few more minutes. And uh, it, it is con constantly being 
cut back and forth. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And you will find in this call, uh, this person, I'm not even going to glorify him with a name. We're going to call him JW for this, uh, for this broadcast. As far as I'm concerned, that's all I, I, I don't even want to speak the man's name. So J, JW is on the call. He's obviously not showing any, uh, any kind of emotion or any kind of, uh, concern. He, when they ask the, the JW, if he wants to start CPR, he doesn't even respond. Um, Anyone with any amount of empathy, whatever, would have already been doing CPR while they're calling or had someone doing CPR while they were calling. Um, he's also told the officer that you've heard that he uh, is not breathing. But then you also find a little bit later on, he can't even see Durante and he mumbles to someone nearby, get me a spotlight. Um, and, and you'll find out that he couldn't even see Durante to see if he was, if he was breathing or not. So I am, uh, I'm like, okay, which one is it? You're either looking at this kid and seeing that he's not breathing or you're not. And then also on top of everything, why aren't you up there? Why aren't you in there with the kid next to the kid calling? Why are you somewhere else trying to relay information? Get your butt in there, you know? Um, and so this is, this is just the one call and you can listen to the whole, the whole thing, um, on, on the website. And like I said, I encourage you to go, um, there's no, no empathy in this in this person's voice, none whatsoever. And you'll find out that this person, you'll find out that this wasn't the first time that this kind of thing has happened on this man's property. So is that why he's not showing empathy? Or is it, is he on drugs? Is he, um, why is this man just flat out seeming not to care? Okay, so that's, that's where we're going to start out here. We've got a 19-year-old uh, boy who hasn't showed any signs of depression, um, who is getting his life together, who has actively worked. See, he there was a point where he almost missed a scholarship, so he had to put in a little extra effort to get his attendance up, to get that scholarship, and to get into football. So he had goals, and he, he chased them. He was achieving them. And right as he steps out and starts to get the prize that he worked so hard for, all of a sudden, he ends up dead and dying in somebody's attic. Now, when we were recording this video the first time, we didn't have all the information that we have now. We went ahead and we have looked at some reports. We've, we've talked to some relatives and we appreciate them sharing their information with us. Um, but we looked at some different reports. And the first thing I noticed uh, was, well, let's continue before I jump to that. This gentleman who um, I use gentlemen loosely, uh, this person, JW, has not only had somebody die on his property before, um, there, he has a criminal record as long as my arm. Um, so does his family that's there with him. Um, we, we also know that he's been arrested after this situation for, uh, for violence after this situation in a different, in a different case. Um, so we, we've got a man who's violent, who has a criminal record, who has a history of drug use and, and perhaps drug use, um, and, and maybe distribution. We're not sure. Um, we've also had someone who has a history of people dying on their property. Um, and then we're going to take it a step further just to let you see what kind of person this JW is. Um, he also likes to put racial slurs on his Facebook page. Publicly, Facebook page, he likes to make racial slurs, um, and some people have labeled him a white supremacist. I have studied cases with white supremacists, and their dark psychology is so evil and wicked, I, I, it's mind-blowing, okay? So I watched some videos with this person talking. I don't necessarily think he's a white supremacist. I think he's a drug addict. I think he's probably uh, a racist, um, but white supremacists, like as in tied into some organization, I'm not sure about. But this person uh, has admitted in court that yes, he he has he does put racial slurs on Facebook, and to me, 
that just makes my blood boil because I don't understand that kind of thing. You know, um, I was raised in church, you know, the whole Sunday school song, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. You know, I don't care if you're purple with pink polka dots. You're a human being. You're valuable. Somebody should have crawled up in that crawl space of an addict with that boy and held his hand as he was dying. Somebody should have been there to put do CPR while somebody else called 911. Somebody should have put some effort in. And then if that's not bad enough, we're going to find out that they didn't put the effort in in the justice system either. Okay. So they have automatically got this phone call from JW. JW says... And uh, we're, that, that's what they've run with, okay? When police get on the scene, when police get on the scene, they make a note that JW's eyes were red as if he had been crying. Now, uh, to me, that's nonsense. I've read lots of police reports, lots of autopsy reports. I've read all these things in some very disturbing cases and never once... Does a police officer make note of something like that? It's almost as if the officer is trying to provide an alibi or back up the man's alibi. Girls, what do you think of that? Do you think I've ne to me, that's almost like he's trying to validate the man's alibi, which is not the police officer's job. What do you think, girls? I agree. It it, it's not the policeman's job. And, and that alibi, I even question that. Exactly. Okay, so, uh, Tammy, you have uh, something to say before we jump into what we well, found out? In that state of mind, people don't even have time to think about it. I don't think they really react that way that quick until they sit back and think about it. So I don't think he would be crying. I don't. Well, if he was crying, you would have heard it on the call. Um, according to reports, uh, the call came in at 3.01 a.m. The officer was on the scene by 3.12. So the officer was obviously only 11 minutes away. Um, when did JW have his ball fest? It wasn't on the call. So somewhere in that 11 minutes, then he has his meltdown and balls. I, I have a, a hard time figuring that out. So also you come in, you see these reports, you find out that the house is cleaned. Everything's cleaned. And so you have these teenagers who are supposedly having this party, these teenagers and older teens, uh, 19, somewhere around there. You have this group of people having a party, but then it almost looks like things have been cleaned up before the officer gets there. So I'm thinking, okay, that's another piece that we need to put in our, in our arsenal and just let sit and think about for a minute. Um, if that's not disturbing enough, we look through these things and we find out, okay, why is this boy going 90 minutes from home to a party of someone he doesn't know? He's going with a friend who does know, okay, um, or someone he he used to know kind of thing. Because uh, according to some things I've read, uh, the mother didn't actually know these people well, um, but it was kind of somebody from his old stomping grounds kind of thing. So, um we want to, so he's going to a party 90 minutes away. He ends up in a, uh, in a white man's house who, who's been labeled a white supremacist. And absolutely, he, he's never denied that because, you know, you put all these things online and there are some things that he has, he has lashed out and denied and, and tried to control the narrative and everything. But he's never once outright said, no, I'm not. You know what I'm thinking? Okay. Um, something else, another hard spoonful of swallow there. Um, you would think that was the first thing you'd say. No, that that's not me. I'm not, you know, but that he hasn't, you know, and so that lack of denial makes you question things. So um, anyway, so we're, we're continuing on. The officer gets to the property and through the reports, it says that not only was Durante in the attic, but it kind of explains what the attic was. The attic, there was an upstairs, and in that upstairs bedroom, in that closet, was access to the attic. So you go upstairs into the bedroom, into the bedroom's closet, and then you can go up into an attic that has no floor. 
So the officer made notes that he was having to kind of go walk on uh, on the on the different boards trying to step across things because there was no floor. He had to. And and so I'm thinking, why? Why was Durante up there? What, why would anyone go up there ever? OK, so so this is where this boy ends up losing his life up there. Now, we know for a fact that uh, there was somebody else up there with him. Now, there's been conflicting reports. And if you read all the different news articles and different podcasts and things, you get conflicting reports on that. But there was actually somebody there. And uh, we know who that person was. And that person just happened to be gone from the scene when the officer showed up. How convenient. Now, so what's what we what we have now? We've got a um, a deceased football player in the attic uh, of of a perhaps a white supremacist, um, and we think, okay, somebody's going to question this. They 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 take the boy down. They're going to do their autopsy. They're going to they're going to justice is going to prevail. This is 2024. You know, back then it was, you know, 2021. This is the modern era. Nobody. Nobody can get away with stuff like this anymore. Right. This is what we believe. We think, OK, we've got we've got forensics. We've got this. We got that. Nobody's going to get away with anything. Justice is going to prevail. But it doesn't. They immediately label it. And then they also, um, they call in, uh, there was some reports that said that they, all, of course the family's questioning this. You're thinking, this is flat out insane. This this is not a, uh, a boy that would do this. This is not a boy who, who was suffering mental health issues. This is not, he had no reason for this. Um, so why? You know, you think, okay, they're wrong. So everybody starts questioning. And according to all these different other reports and websites, the Missouri Highway Patrol uh, stepped in and reinvestigated and verified the original autopsy that, yes. Well, here's the problem with that. I called the Missouri Highway Patrol, Troop E, which is the troop that handles that county, and I talked to them yesterday and I asked them about this case. I said, one question was, is it closed or is it open? Because you have some people saying, well, it's a close, it's a closed case. Okay. Then give us all the details. Okay. They won't give you the details. Okay. So they, you, you ask again and they're like, well, we can't give you details on an, on, on an active investigation. You just said it's closed. So is it closed or is it open? Or have you guys just written this off and not doing your job anymore? Okay, we'll just leave that out there hanging and you can figure that one out for yourself. So here what we're doing and now is, is we're thinking, okay, the autopsy says now the Missouri Highway Patrol has come in and verified it. They have reinvestigated, right? I mean, that's what everybody's saying online that, well, this has been verified by a second source. I talked to the Missouri Highway Patrol. They didn't re-investigate anything. Let me say that again. They didn't re-investigate anything. They weren't brought in as, as somebody to back up their findings. They came in. They actually uh, offered their assistance because that county doesn't have all the resources it needs. And it's a standard practice for rural counties and police departments. If they don't have a crime lab, if they don't have a DNA testing, if they don't have these things, they send it on up to, uh, up to the Missouri Highway Patrol. So these people are being led to believe that, hey, we found out with our autopsy that it was and we've got a second opinion. OK, um, unfortunately, the fact that they're allowing somebody to they're assisting on a case or they're allowing this this county to use some of their facilities, that's not backing somebody up or getting a second opinion or reinvestigating. That's that that's not that's standard practice. That isn't anything. So these family members have been told, well, hey, we came up with and we got a double check here. We, we, we've already got a second opinion, so you're wrong. 
Well, I talked to the Missouri Highway Patrol and they said, no, we didn't reinvestigate that case. We assisted on that case because they don't have the facilities that we need. Girls, what do you think about that? I'm going to get a sip of my coffee. I'm wondering why the Highway Patrol confirmed that it was they could surely. Well, see, when I talked to that officer, he wouldn't say that they confirmed anything. See, he wouldn't directly tell me that they confirmed anything. He said, we did not reinvestigate anything on that case. We offered our assistance because they don't, ha- they're, a sm- they, they're a smaller police department that doesn't have everything they need. So hmm. they didn't necessarily um, come in and say, hey, uh, we, we validate all of these findings. So this is where I get upset because I'm sitting here going, these family members are being told, hey, our coroner proved it. And we went ahead and took it to to another another district, uh, you know, to the Missouri Highway Patrol and they verified it, too. So we've got a we got two people backing us up. That's not that's not what happened, you know. And so this is what we need to understand. There was a second autopsy done, but it was because the family ordered it. And this is what we want to, this is what we want to understand. When it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, you've got a boy that is right-handed and has his right hand in a cast. Okay. His right hand's in a cast. He's supposed to be holding this gun. Um, and we did find the gun and, and, and get the information on that. Um, but what I was curious about, and this is, this is what I, um, what really upsets me. Um, it is, uh, we've got the gun here. Um, I've got all the specs on the gun. Okay. So this gun is 6.9 inches long. So it's, it's not huge. Um, but it weighs a little over two pounds and, The barrel length is 2.8 inches, so the barrel's not too long. So it's a smaller gun. Um, But what I'm asking is, why would he shoot himself with his non-dominant hand? Because the wounds in the autopsy were on the left side of his head. Okay, So if the wounds were on the left side, then why would he do that? We already know that he didn't do it through his right hand because his right hand was in a cast. Okay, So... We're thinking, okay, this is not making sense. So I, I'm just going to, I'm going to stop because we got so many more questions to go by. Um, I'm just going to stop. Uh, girls, I want you to, uh, to, to comment. We'll start with Tammy. What do you think up to this point? Um, I'm going to check on some comments. I'm getting a whole bunch of comments come in. Uh, Tammy, what do you think? On this, do you think that this is legitimate? Do you think that they actually did their job and investigated this properly? Or do you think that perhaps this rural police department is not doing a thorough job on this? I don't think they did their job at all. <laughs> Me neither. I was really trying to be nice. The more you get into it, the more you see. <laughs> Exactly. Now, this is this is something else I want to talk about too. Um, Cricket, what do you say? Oh, I I agree a hundred percent. I mean, right from the get go, you know, seems like the simplest thing. We're gonna go with it, and then we don't have to do anything else. Just wipe exactly. our hands of it. Exactly. Now, okay. this is, go ahead, Tammy. About, about the highway patrol. Yeah. On one of the reports, it said. After reviewing the pictures and all information regarding the case, it says the Missouri State Highway Patrol uh, agreed that the gunshot wound to Martin's head was on one of their reports. So I'm wondering why they said that. Yeah, and then on the call, they tell me that they didn't actually reinvestigate anything. And so this is why I'm like, hmm. and this is the thing. Uh, you know, I'm going to read through the comments and, and shout out to some people. Um, but this is this is why I'm just laying it out as what we found. And I'm going to let you guys come to your own conclusions because I'm a child of the 80s and I was taught to take in information and use my brain to come to a conclusion. I'm not, I wasn't taught to be spoon fed things. So I'm telling you what we found. And then I'm hoping that you're intelligent enough to figure out what's going on in this case, because this child was robbed of his life this mother was robbed of watching her son achieve something great 
this grandma was robbed of, of watching her grandson achieve something great. One day he might grow, have grown up and got married. He may have had grandkids. You know, all of this was stripped from this family. And those that were called to serve and protect, who took an oath to serve and protect, are not serving this case. You know, um, they get all into the protect, protect, protect. But this is what, when they say serve and protect, this is what the word serve means. You're supposed to do your due diligence. You're supposed to show empathy and compassion. You know, you're supposed to do everything you can to help the family during this horrendous time. That's part of the service of a law officer. OK, um, and so it's more than uh, having a badge and a gun and 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 doing all of the protection. It's their service and they're not doing their service in this case. OK, so we're going to talk to some of the uh, the comments real quick. Uh, Venus, hello. I like your fedoras. Yeah, I got them back on. I used to wear them all the time, but now I I kind of stopped when I was doing more victims advocacy. And now I've got them back that I'm chasing cold cases. Miss Lotz, thank you so much for, for joining us. I appreciate you uh, uh, joining us and, and going through this with us. Uh, Miss Lotz says uh, he's lying. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, W.D. Smith, hiya. Let me guess this happened in some redneck town. Absolutely. Uh, uh, supposedly a little over 4,000 people. Um, was the gun a revolver? Revol I'm tongue-tied today. Revolver or semi-automatic? Any idea on the caliber? I'm going to give you guys exactly what kind of gun it was. It's an AT. Uh, it's an Accutech uh, AT38101. So, um, gun. I don't know if you can see it here. Might be easier if I I found one. Um, I'll just find it online, um, and and I'll share it here in a little bit. Um, so, uh, the caliber is, I believe, 38. Is it 38? I believe it is. I think it said a 38. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It says 38. I just took a couple screenshots on my phone, so I was like, I'm not sure. Um, and so this is where I'm like, I, I think so. <laughs> I it can't is a, I have it here. Do you have it? Yeah. I'm trying to find where it says it at. Um, I believe it's a 38. Yeah. Well, let me see. It's a, I'm showing a, showing a picture. I'm trying to get the exact. Mm -hmm. And so this is what disturbs me while you're looking for that. So let me, let me go check on Facebook, see if we got comments over there. I've got several. I've got quite a few people watching in several different places. I really appreciate it. Um, please continue to the end because I am going to do two things. I am going to ask you to do something to help in this case. So many cases we cover and there's nothing really we can do but raise publicity, you know, about the case. But this is one case that you can, as an audience member, do something. And, and, um, and we're going to ask you to do that. But I'm also going to give away a free book for the, for somebody who's watched till the end. Um, just to keep you uh, watching till the end, because I, I find that um, in so many cases, we just feel helpless because we can't do nothing about it. But this one, there is something you can do. Okay. Okay. So uh, while you're looking for the gun, Tammy, did you find the gun? I'm seeing the pictures and I'm seeing the ID number and the date and the time, the subject type and the image. And somewhere earlier, I thought I saw 38 on there, but I'm not seeing it yeah. now, but I'm pretty sure it was a 38 caliber. Well, I was doing all kinds of research and snapping picture screenshots and texting them to you. And, and so <laughs> it's hard to keep them all, keep them all straight. Um, but this is, this is what I, I want people to understand. Um, we're going to dive into the autopsy here in just a minute. Um, but the person that took him to this party from what I understand, is also the person that was in that attic with him, who also ran out after the shot was heard. Um, and this person was arrested later for something else, um, but it doesn't seem like this person's being held accountable for anything either. 
So you've got you've got two suspicious characters, um, quite a few of them, in this case, and yet nothing's really nothing's really been done. So, uh, did you find the gun stuff? Well, I saw thirty eight. Maybe it was on a different report, but I'm seeing the pictures and everything. Okay. That, uh, from the Madison County Sheriff's Office. Yeah. That thing that you sent me. Where I saw 38 on there at one time, and now I don't know why it's not. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to send it to myself so I can screen share it. I think's what I'm going to do. Uh, so, okay. So we want to, we want to understand that the family didn't believe in from the beginning. And we didn't believe. Uh, do, does anybody, we'll just do a quick, quick rundown. We'll do a little vote because this is supposed to be a democracy. Do any of you think that this was a so far? No. With what I've showed you. Comments, please send your comments in because I'm still looking for the gun while I'm, while I'm going. So let me, let me see that. Do you, anybody, anybody, if you believe it, that's fine. I want to hear it because so far. Nobody I've talked to about this case believes it is. Okay, I'm just going to type it in, and then uh, we'll find. Okay. And to me, it seems strange. How did he even know that Etik was there? You know, he'd never exactly. been to that house. Why, why would he go through the bedroom to find the attic? he never even exactly. been there. No, no. And they also said, uh, we'll, we'll get into uh, what they found in the autopsy, and then... Uh, what they found in the second autopsy and my questions about them. Okay. Uh, Joanne has very interesting subject. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Kimberly says a gun that we've never seen, not even at the coroner's inquest. Um, so they said they don't, they've never even seen this gun. Um, and we're going to, we're going to find out who, who gave it to them. And uh, WD says, no, it doesn't sound plausible. No, no, no. Everybody so far, no, no. Yep. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm curious, you know, I want to know if you think that I'm just flat out wrong here, feel free to tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm big enough to take it. Okay. So I'm going to do another screen share. I've, I've got the gun pulled up here. This is not the gun. It's just a, obviously a gun like like it that I found for sale um, on a website. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen. Girls, let me know when you can see it. I can see it. Yeah. This is the same make and model of a gun that that was supposedly used in this. Okay. This gives you all of the specs of it. Um, and I'm, I'm curious because it's 6.9 inches long. So, uh, you're going to have to be able to really twist your wrist to get that where it needs to be. And with your, uh, you know, your non-dominant hand. So, um, also I would like to know trajectory because to me, from what I've seen in the autopsy, that isn't in the right trajectory because it would be at an up angle, not a down angle or a straight angle. It would be more. And they didn't, I didn't see a lot of that. So I'd like to know what happened there. But we're also talking that this is, uh, when it comes down to weight, it's a little over two pounds. Okay. So this is, this is the gun we're talking about right here. All right. So we're going to get out of that and uh, let you guys, we'll get back to, get back to it. Okay. Uh, Venus says, what? Have the authorities done about this so far? Do they have any leads? Venus, that is the problem. They have done nothing. They have done nothing. So they ended up uh, hiring, getting a second autopsy done. And um, then a, juror, uh, a jury was called um, to look over the case and the facts to see if, you know, if this was not. And that jury inquest said no. That second autopsy says death by violence. Uh, WD gives us a little education on the gun. He says that's a, a 380 rather than a 38, same as the Bursa I have. 
a 380 is actually a nine millimeter short. Thank you for that information. Uh, Joanne says, do you think race had anything to do with it? I don't think, I, I honestly thought it was a racial thing to begin with. And I'm not sure that it's not. Uh, but once you find out how podunked this police department is and how many cases that they have done this crap on, you're thinking, I don't think they give a crap about their citizens at all. But no, I know for a fact if you've got someone, it race has to be involved because they he's the only African American there, and he is in a man's house who likes to put racial slurs online and doesn't apologize for it. And I'm thinking, so yeah, I do believe race is involved in it, along with a bunch of other things too. I think you know, uh, I the person's house that he was in. The man has been labeled a, right, a white supremacist online. He's never refuted that. So in that situation, yeah, I think race is involved. But why isn't the police department doing something? You know, I'm sitting here. There's, a, I just get so angry when I when I look at this. I'm just, you know, I try really hard not to get emotional. But this one really, uh, I, it, it's hard. It's real, real hard. Maybe it's because I have a son so close to this age. Um, I, I, uh, sorry guys, somebody say something. I yeah. got a screenshot of that picture and sent it to you. Did you? Enlarge it and see it on there. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't see anywhere where it says three or 38, but I guess maybe it was a different report that actually said what it was, but the one I'm yeah. looking at right now, it just has pictures and some technical stuff, but I don't see where it says 38. But anyway, I did send it to you. Okay. You to pull it up on your, on your okay. phone. And you uh, WD it. says, I heard someone say M Madison County, I suspect near Huntsville, Alabama. Madison County is in Missouri. Um, I'm not sure how close Huntsville, Alabama is. Um, but uh, he says the gun Celtic uh, AT, AT380. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, WD, there's another couple guns I'm looking for on some cold cases. If you want to message me after the show, you might have some information on a couple guns I'm trying to find information on. He seems to be good at all that. Okay. Um, so let's get back to it. Um, now we're to the point of the autopsy. First autopsy says suicide and that he has a small amount of methamphetamines in his system. Okay. This is strange because this is a child who doesn't have any history of drug use before. Um, he is taken back to uh, uh, his, his the place that he went to high school by someone he used to know. He ends up at a house of of uh, where there has been a lot of violence and drug use in the past and has a history of, of the people that live there. He's taken there. Uh, I don't know why or how he ends up with with uh, uh, with meth in his system. They said that he was freaking out and he shot himself. Okay, that was one report, uh, one witness statement. Now you're going to also come out and find uh, uh, one witness says that uh, that Durante was uh, feeling uncomfortable, and rightly so. He's an African American child in a very dangerous environment with people who are racist, you know, against his nationality and against him. And, and uh, so he's starting to feel uncomfortable. So they said they gave him a gun. And I'm like, the same person who brought him supposedly gave him the gun, according to one witness statement and one report. So if this is true, why the heck didn't you put your friend in the car, drive him to grandma's house 30 minutes away and come back to the party? If you were so, I have to stay at the party, I don't want to leave. I'm thinking you've got a 19 year old black man who is getting uncomfortable because of the environment he's in. If you were any kind of friend, you would have got him out of the environment. Right? Would you not? Would you not have said, okay, well, his grandma lives 30 minutes away. I'm just going to run him over there and then I'll come back to this party that's oh so important. Okay? So I'm asking, why did that person decide it was smart to give him a gun 
if he's uncomfortable. Okay. If he's uncomfortable, take him home. Okay. So this is, this is what's bothering me on top of everything else. So instead of this, and we don't know that, we don't know that Durante was paranoid or anything to me. We don't even know, according to me in, in everything that I've seen so far with all of this so-called investigation, they could have gave, they could give him a shot of something. They could have given him a hot shot. He didn't die fast enough. So they shot him in the head. That's crude and horrible, and I hate to even say that, but we don't know that. We don't know, you know, and our job is to sit here and speculate and, and wonder what the heck happened and, and try to make a public outcry and ask people to help us. But the people that are, their job is to find out the truth aren't doing anything. And so the, the family, um, the family ordered another autopsy, which I have no idea how much that cost them, but they, they had to get an autopsy, a second one. And the second autopsy says death by violence. And the reason being is they went and, and the bad thing is the autopsy, the second autopsy couldn't be as thorough as they would want to be because he was embalmed immediately after the first autopsy. Nobody gave permission for that, but he was immediately embalmed after the first autopsy. Okay. Um, and then by the second autopsy, they had to deal with all that. Okay. But they looked at the wound, the head wound of this boy, and they they noticed that there were some key things missing from this head wound that if it had been, there should have been there. For one, you're going to get an imprint of the barrel of that gun because it's going to kick and it's going to hit. Okay. You're going to have that imprint. It's not there. You're going to have burning of the skin. It's not there. You're going to have soot. It's not there. You're going to have these little speckles of red as it, as it, you know, because when a bullet comes out, there's fire, you know, it's not just a projectile. There's, there's a lot of power behind it and you've got gunpowder and everything. It's going to leave a mark. None of those things. Let me say that again. None of those things were present on that boy's head. None. And so they ruled because of that. That gun couldn't have been close to that boy's head. It had to be about two to three feet away, at least. Or those things would have been present. If it was within a foot, you would still had the burning. You would have still had some soot. You know, the closer it got, the more the more of those things you would see. Okay, but basically, the, that second autopsy, the coroner said, um, it couldn't have been within two foot. Of Durante's head. So tell me this. How are you going to shoot a gun with your non-dominant hand two foot away? You can't. Okay. Your arm's not that stinking long. Okay. So um, if that's not enough, and this is what's so disturbing, that's not enough to make you question. You're not listening. <laughs> but there's more. The um, the first coroner has had their work put in question on other cases where they immediately labeled obvious homicides as to get them off the books. So you have a coroner who's had their work questioned before for shoddy police work. And this is the coroner that did the first autopsy on Durante. Okay. So if that's not enough to upset you, I'm going to really tick you off tonight. I really, really am. And if I don't, then then you need to check your empathy levels. I'm telling you. Um, so the coroner has already been questioned for doing shoddy police work. Okay. You'll also find in several different incident, incidences throughout this case that things just happened to not work or they just didn't get this recorded or then they didn't get that recorded. Uh, there's, there's so many different things that is just insane. Well, this broke down and we didn't get it fixed for six months or, or, you know, there's always some excuse, but this is a coroner who's had their question, their work questioned before. And now that's being questioned again. Okay. Then, so they said, okay, we're going to call in a jury of six people. These six people 
look over all of this stuff and they agree with the second autopsy and says this is death by violence. So what do you guys think is going to happen? What should happen? Somebody tell me in the comments, what should happen in this case? What do you think would have happened? Kim, uh, let's see, Miss Lott says it's our belief that they drugged him. Absolutely. He wasn't, he wasn't a, a, a kid that was, had that propensity. You know, he, he had goals, he had plans, he had two jobs at one point. He was, no, no, that's absolutely, I agree. Uh, let's see. Um, WD says, yep, I study fireworm arms, wrote a book about, cool. You'll have to tell me more about that in, in uh, Messenger about your book. I'm in Tennessee, about 60 miles northwest of Huntsville. Madison County is north. Um, WD, we're talking Madison County, Missouri, not Mount Madison County, Alabama. Um, yeah, we're talking about Missouri. Um, yeah. Okay, so I've got more messages. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm, I'm, we're going live on several different places, so I'm trying to catch all the comments as I can. All right, so let's, uh, girls, you have a comment? I'm not getting my coffee drunk very much. I'm tired. I did find it on another page. It said it's an Accutech auto loading pistol .380. So is that the same as a 38 or? Anyway, I said .380 caliber. Yeah, he says, no, there's a difference between a 380 and a 38. So, um, okay. yeah. So it's a little bit different, he says. So uh, we will go into that. Okay. Um, Cricket, you have any comments before we go into the next, as if this isn't enough? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, they did not, they should have taken clothes from everybody in that house to test for gunpowder. I, mm -hmm. I mean, just so much, everyone should have been questioned, lie detected, everything. Nothing yeah. was done, and... The only lie detector that uh, detection that we know of was given to JW and it was administered by a non-official, uh, non-certified, it was just a, a trooper. It wasn't a certified, um, a certified person, that, a polygraph examiner. You have to have a certified polygraph examiner to read the, the results and it wasn't done by that. It was just done by a trooper. So yeah, I, I tried to call a few places and find out what the law was in Missouri. Um, uh, but everything I found so far, you have to have a certified examiner there. You don't just have a, a an officer. Um, yeah, so, and with those, the, with those that, that little test that he did, I mm -hmm. mean, they could have just said he passed. Well, in, in all reality, but they no, might as well have. That's what they've done for everything else. I'm like, exactly. You haven't done anything else, so, you know, what the heck. You know, and this is what really bothers me, you know, uh, if that wasn't enough to drive you insane, wondering what the heck's going on in this county. Um, I'm going to read you a statistic uh, that I found. And and this is Missouri. We're not talking Alabama. We're, we're talking Missouri. And we're talking someplace that's only got a little over 4000 people, 4000 permanent residents. OK, so we're not talking about a big place. I asked. What is the crime rate in Fredericktown, Missouri? And this is, I'm going to read it verbatim. The crime rate of 31 per 1,000 residents. Fredericktown has one of the highest crime rates in America compared to all communities of all sizes, from the smallest towns to the very largest cities. One's chance of becoming a victim of either violent or property crime here is 1 in 32. And we're talking about a small town of 4,000 people. And so you have a, you are going to be victimized if you stay there. That's just all there is to it. And you think, holy crap, you know, what is law enforcement doing? How is this possible? You know, and in reality, they're not doing a whole lot. And once you, once you start reading about it, you're going to find out that there are tons of cases from this area. I'm trying to look it up now. Did you guys count when I sent you that corruption group? There is a there is a group called Exposed Corruption of Madison County, Missouri. Um, and it has a list. Let me look here. Ah, here we go. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 cases listed on this website right now. Um, that are either unsolved or 
or mislabeled or, or something. They're not getting justice in 12 cases. And I guarantee you, if you, if you dig in, you'll find there's even more. So we're talking about a, a town that, that a place that is very rural, very small. You would think, you know, probably by just the looks of it, it's a safe place to be. It's, you know, it's just another small town, you know, maybe have some poverty problems or something like that. But it says right there that it is one of the highest crime rates in the entire U.S. And that's going up against places like Chicago. You know, um, this is insane. Why isn't somebody doing something? You know, I, I just don't. Um, someone says. Uh, Miss Lutz says. Um, the gun they say Durante shot himself with only had one bullet in the chamber and no magazine. Oh, that's convenient. Uh, Venus says it also sounds as if there's very little cooperation from authorities. They're not very experienced. Um, the thing is, is uh, if you're not experienced and your county or your town is that bad on the st crime statistics, get the freaking experience. Take the online course. You know, do something. Instead of, you know, I, I read some different things from different locals that had posted things and they said it just seems like the police department don't really care. They just let it all sort itself out. And I'm like, it ain't sorting nothing. You know, there's you some Southern slang. It ain't sorting, it ain't sorting nothing, you know. Uh, but uh, that, that I'm like, you know. And so this is what's so disturbing. Even after the jury said that this was death by violence and the second autopsy said death by violence and so called the Missouri Department, uh, the Missouri Highway Patrol uh, came in and everything. Nobody's done anything. The case isn't reopened. The case isn't being investigated. Um, nobody seems to be doing anything. I know, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I wasn't sure if it was a year ago or a year and a half ago, whatever. Um, they even tried to approach the FBI and it doesn't seem like the FBI's taking it on. The only hope that I have when it comes to the FBI, they're not going to let you know that they're in your backyard. You know, they keep everything close to the chest and they won't, you won't know that they're after you until they arrest you. So I'm hoping, but it doesn't look like anything's happening there either. Um, you know, there's, there's that spoke, a spark of naive hope that thinks, please be doing something behind the scenes. But you're, you're, uh, you know, you're hoping, you know, you still have that, that, that childish, naive hope that somebody's going to stand up and do what's right. And, and I just hope in this case that somebody is, and, but according to the evidence, nobody is, um, and so that's where we're, we're going to be talking. I've got a few more comments. Girls, you go ahead and let me know uh, just kind of some uh, closing things. What do we need to talk about? What have I missed? Because there's so much more I could talk about this case. In fact, we are going to make a, a, uh, a podcast series of at least two episodes, maybe three, because there's 12 cases in this town that are just as terrible and horrific as Durantes and nobody's doing anything on them either. So we're gonna we're gonna do a whole corruption series on this on this town um, for the podcast. Uh, but I wanted to do every Tuesday night. I'm gonna go over a case and we just kind of have to highlight, touch on the high points because we've only got a little over an hour to get it done, you know. Um, but uh, we're getting close to the we're right at the hour. So girls, let me know what you think. I'm gonna read through some comments and and uh, then we'll tell the audience what they can do to help. In, in my opinion, I feel like if this was not initially a setup, uh, once he got there, he was trapped. Yeah. With no and see, way out. Yeah. So that's what I think. I'm. You have to wonder the culpability of everyone involved. Was it something that they, they planned this and this was a setup? And he was the only African-American... Uh, invited on purpose? Um, or was this just the way it turned out? Uh, no. But I, I do have one thing I want to say. Uh, 
uh, Joanne says, could the family call in a more experienced private in get investigator from a large city? I don't know. That would probably be the next step in things. Um, someone else says, in Tennessee, if I'm right, the TBI investigates all questionable deaths. I believe I've read that somewhere, too. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is one thing I wanted to point out, and I, and I don't know. Um, now, let me explain to you what an autopsy is actually. An autopsy is a, a basic report of the state of a human body. Okay. From the skin down, I mean, all the way down to the bone, everything, they... They are supposed to report every single thing that that body, whatever state it's in, okay? So I don't care if you had heart surgery 10 years ago, the scars should be reported on that autopsy. And if it's not, the coroner is doing shoddy work and not doing his job. So my curious mind thinks, is this something that um, in the original autopsy, I haven't got to see that one, was his surgery scars mentioned? Okay. If his surgery scars are not mentioned, there is flat out proof that this person's not doing their job. And legally, I believe that autopsy could be thrown out because I'm not an attorney. I'm just saying from the, I, I have written about 300 cases. So I, I've learned some patterns over, over, you know, over time. But uh, basically, I believe if that original autopsy doesn't report every single thing, which is what it's supposed to be, they're not supposed to necessarily, you know, come to any conclusions or anything till the end or anything. They are supposed to report the state of that body, everything. So if that's not on the first autopsy, I think there's a legal right that they have to throw it out. And if that first one is thrown out, then the only one left to fight with is the death by violence. So I'm not sure, Kimberly, if you've already gone down that road. Um, but if you um, if you haven't, you might check into that. Because I believe if they haven't mentioned that, um, that uh, that's right there. That's something you can legally throw it out. I'm pretty sure. Um, like I said, I'm not a, an attorney. Okay, what else, girls, do we need to um, talk about before we get... Well, I just want to toss out, just as a warning, when it comes to private investigators, you still have to be careful, check into them, because mm -hmm. I've had cases, I believe Sonova too, where yeah. private investigators take advantage of the families. Right. Um, the, the case I'm working on so publicly right now is is got the same thing. Um, they stole everything out of out of the deceased website, uh, out of the deceased um, uh, estate, and then ran off. Yeah. Um, okay, so I am posting in the comments of this. I'm posting. Um, I think I yeah. Okay, I'm posting. There is Durante's website. There, justice for Durante.com. Um, I want you guys. I'm going to share my screen real quick, so you guys can see this. And like I said. You can dive into this case even more. We've talked about it for an hour, but there's so much more you can go into. It's it's just horrible. Okay, so can you guys see my screen, girls? Yes. Okay. Um, there's a lag, so that's the reason why I ask for those of you that are watching. I need you guys all that's watching. I need you to go to justicefordurante.com, and I need you to scroll down on that front page right here till you get to these two different colored boxes. Okay? There's action one. Demand an independent investigation. Tell the Department of Justice to uncover the truth. Okay. U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. There's two phone numbers you can you can call or here's an email. Okay. Uh, I want you guys, everyone that's watching, I want you to take a moment to do this for the family. Okay. The second one, action number two, you report Durante's death to the FBI Hate Crimes Division. Okay. So there's the Missouri office phone number. There's the national office phone number. Um, and then there's the tips. So if you are, are wanting to uh, do it online, there's that. So these are two actions that I'm asking you as an audience to do. Because if they get a thousand people saying, reporting this, throwing a fit, they get 10,000 people doing it, they will have to. We can force their hand into doing this. 
And this is what we're, this is, it's terrible that we have to do this, but this is what we are doing. The next one I want you guys to look at, there's a Facebook group here that I am going to um, post a Facebook group here. And uh, those of you that want to follow along, this is the corruption Facebook group that has been established to try to expose the corruption out of this uh, Madison County, Missouri. I want you guys to go. I want you to join. I want you to get involved and I want you to share it. Okay. So everybody that's watching can do those two things or those three things to help out in this case. And like I said, so many cases we cover, you know, we're just trying to raise publicity. We can't actually do anything else. But in this case, there are some things that we can do. And I'm asking you to step forward. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you, if this case has touched you in any way, I ask you to do that. Okay, final comments, girls, before I give away a book. Miss Lott, yes, we haven't. Okay, go ahead. There was also the issue of the cell phone. Didn't what the yeah, cell phone? Yeah, there were so point? many cases that I. This is what's so disturbing. We haven't even got to that part. Why was the cell phone returned uh, to the family wiped? Why was the data wiped off of it? You know, why was the clothes uh, and cast taken from from? Why wasn't all of his personal effects returned to the grandma or the mother? Why? You know, his clothes, his shoes, his his wallet, his keys, his his phone, you know, everything that he has, it should have been in a bag labeled evidence and returned. Because, see, technically this case is supposedly closed, so they have no reason to hang on to it. Why isn't it returned? And why would a cast not be t returned? You know, I mean, or... or why was it not included in anything? That was something else. If they didn't mention the cast in the, I want to know the crime scene photos. Was the cast anywhere in the crime scene photos? I mean, did they hide the cast? Did they take the cast away? You know, when they, you know, was this staged and they took the cast away to, you know, so I don't know. Nothing in this case makes sense. Nothing makes sense. Uh, Kimberly, uh, Miss Lott says, no, we haven't. Uh, we will check into it. Are uh, you talking about the autopsy thing or the private investigator? Uh, the private investigator, I'd say, um, like like Cricket said, be careful um, because technically there's not a lot of governing bodies to manage private investigators. So you really want to check out their background and check out the cases that they have they have worked and, and see what kind of conclusions they brought in and all that because uh, there are a lot of charlatans out there. Okay, so I'm going to give away this free little book. Um, it's one of my little books. It is Grim Justice. It's one of those that um, I give away for free if you sign up for my mailing list. And so I'm going to draw a name of people that have commented throughout the show. And if you already have this, I will give you the choice between the Grim Justice or the Shattered Book. The Shattered Book is my 2018 case files book. And it's got like 20 something cases that I covered on my blog in 2018. So you'll have your choice between the two. All right. Let me count here. Let's see. All right. Okay. Girls, you have any final thoughts while I'm doing this? Cricket? I, I just, I'm, I'm praying that, you know, people like the FBI, that they are doing their job. Um, I have my doubts with FBI on a case where this woman, the FBI should have jumped in on her so fast because this scandal was played out on uh, YouTube and nothing was done. Three families were traumatized. One young man committed suicide and they did nothing. Yeah. And see, this is, this is what's so disturbing. This happens so much more than we, we won't care to believe or realize. Okay. Um, all right, Tammy, I would need you to pick between a number between one and a hundred. Uh, 77. 77. Okay, give me just a second. Let's see who. 77. Okay. 
Crap. I lost my numbers. Here's my numbers. Okay. Uh, Joanne Davis. Haha. -ha. I know you. Haha. -ha. You're our winner for tonight for watching live. Uh, do you want the Grim Justice or do you want the Shattered? Which one would you like? I will send it to you. Joanne Davis. Are you still on there with us, Joanne? Guys, make sure and check out Bones Coffee. I've got the link in the video description. Um, Bones Coffee has all kinds of different flavors. I love the art that comes on the coffee bags. It's, it's just really interesting. But all of those affiliate links and purchases of my books and everything, um, all of that helps me continue doing this. Um, Joanne says shattered. Okay. Congratulations, Joanne. I will sign this to you and get it to you. Guys, next Tuesday night, we're going to be back here um, talking about a different case. Keep an eye out for the Chasing Justice podcast. Um, those podcasts are an hour long, and then we have a behind-the-scenes uh, part of the podcast for the Patreons, uh, subscribers that support us. And so we'll go into a little bit more of a deep dive. Uh, we'll talk about Durante's case some more, uh, you know, and as we get more information, we'll, uh, you know, I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to keep pushing this out there and keep sharing it on my blog. We're going to keep, keep getting it out there and, until we kindle a fire under these people um, and get them to do something. But uh, we're going to deep dive into uh, we're going to deep dive into the corruption in this county and we're going to cover those 12 cases and then any more that we find, uh, because the concept is this this law enforcement department is either extremely inept, they don't have what they need or they don't care or they're flat out corrupt taking payoffs, whatever those reasons are, you know, whatever the actual reason behind this is, it's enough. They need to get up and do what they're supposed to do. And it's time for us to stand up as a community online and, and those that are in the County and thereby, you know, uh, and I, I said this in the, in the show last night when I was, when we was trying to record this, those of you that live in Madison County, you deserve better. You know, you think, well, that's just the way it is. No, it's time for you to stand up. Those of you that are residents in that county um, and in that town, you deserve better. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for your daughter, your son. You know, you may still have your child, but it could have just as easily been yours that ended up in that attic. You know, uh, so, so you deserve better. Stand up. It's time to do something about this. You don't have to just, you know, uh, bow down and take this. You know, you have rights. You deserve better. Uh, there was one article I read about a business owner who his business was right across the the from the sheriff's department and he had been robbed six times and nobody had done anything about it. You deserve better than that. You know, and so I ask all of you guys to to stand up shout about this case, share this case, all of the, anything you find about Durante, share this video that we've made, of course, but share everything. Every, anytime you see an article with his name on it, anytime you see his, his, his handsome face, every time you see, you share it because by sharing it, we can make it go viral. And when it does, that's when something's going to happen. So I appreciate you guys signing on for True Crime Tuesday. I will be on next Tuesday live at 7 o'clock. And uh, we may or may not stay right within the hour, but we'll try to. So thank you guys for signing on. Guys, do you want to tell them goodbye? Have a great night, everyone. Yes, goodbye. And I do hope that justice gets served in this case. Me too. Me too. All right, guys. We'll see you next week.